Today I'm going to tell you about solstice and equinox. A solstice is an event occurring when the sun appears to reach its most northerly or southerly excursion relative to the celestial equator on the celestial sphere. Two solstices occur annually around June 21st and December 21st. The term solstice can also be used in a broader sense as the day when this occurs. The day of a solstice in either hemisphere has either the most sunlight of the year, summer solstice, or the least sunlight of the year, winter solstice, for any place other than the equator. Alternative terms with no ambiguity as to which hemisphere is the context are June solstice and December solstice, referring to the months in which they take place every year. The word solstice is derived from the Latin sol, meaning sun, and sister, meaning to stand still, because at the solstices, the sun's declination appears to stand still. That is, the seasonal movement of the sun's daily path as seen from the earth stops at a northern or southern limit before reversing direction. For an observer on the North Pole, the sun reaches the highest position in the sky once a year in June. The day this occurs is called the June Solstice Day. Similarly, for an observer on the South Pole, the sun reaches the highest position on the December Solstice Day. When it is the summer solstice at one pole, it is the winter solstice on the other. The sun's westerly motion never ceases as Earth is continually in rotation. However, the sun's motion in declination comes to a stop at the moment of solstice. In that sense, solstice means sun standing. The seasons occur because the Earth's axis of rotation is not perpendicular to its orbital plane, the plane of the ecliptic, but currently makes an angle of about 23.44 degrees called the obliquity of the elliptic, and because the axis keeps its orientation with respect to an inertial frame of reference. As a consequence, for half the year the northern hemisphere is inclined toward the sun while for the other half of the year the southern hemisphere has this distinction. The two moments when the inclination of Earth's rotational axis has a maximum effect are the solstices. At the June solstice, the subsolar point is further north than at any other time, at latitude 23.44 degrees north, known as the Tropic of Cancer. Similarly, at the December solstice, the subsolar point is further south than any other time, at latitude 23.44 south, known as the Tropic of Capricorn. The subsolar point will cross every latitude between these two extremes exactly twice per year. Many cultures celebrate various combinations of the winter and summer solstices, the equinoxes, and the midpoints between them, leading to various holidays arising around these events. For the summer solstice, Christmas is the most popular holiday to have arisen. In addition, Yalda, Saturnalia, Karachun, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and Yule, see winter solstice for more, are also celebrated around this time. For the northern solstice, Christian culture celebrate the Feast of St. John from June 23rd to 24th, while neo-pagans observe Midsummer, also known as Letha. An equinox is commonly regarded as the instant of time when the plane, extended indefinitely in all direction, of Earth's equator passes through the center of the sun. This occurs twice each year, around 20th of March and 23rd September. In other words, it is the moment at which the center of the visible sun is directly above the equator. Systematically observing the sunrise, people discovered that it occurs between two extreme locations at the horizon and eventually noted the midpoint between the two. Later, it was realized that this happens on a day when the durations of the day and the night are practically equal and the word equinox comes from Latin equus, meaning equal, and nox, meaning night. In the Northern Hemisphere, the vernal equinox in March, conventionally marks the beginning of spring in most cultures and is considered the start of the new year in the Assyrian calendar, Hindu, and the Persian calendar, or Iranian calendars, as Nowruz means new day, while the autumnal equinox in September marks the beginning of autumn. Vernal equinox and autumnal equinox. These classical names are direct derivatives of Latin, ver meaning spring, and autumnus meaning autumn. These are the historically universal and still most widely used terms for the equinoxes, but are potentially confusing because in the southern hemisphere the vernal equinox does not occur in spring and the autumnal equinox does not occur in autumn. The equivalent common language English terms spring equinox and autumn for fall equinox are even more ambiguous. It has become increasingly common for people to refer to the September equinox in the southern hemisphere as the vernal equinox. Day is usually defined as the period when sunlight reaches the ground in the absence of local obstacles. On the date of the equinox, the center of the sun spends a roughly equal amount of time above and below the horizon at every location on the earth, so night and day are about the same length. Sunrise and sunset can be defined in several ways, but a widespread definition is the time that the top limb of the sun is level with the horizon. For the vernal spring equinox, several springtime festivals are celebrated, such as Persian Nowruz, the observance in Judaism of Passover, and in most Christian churches of Easter. 
The autumnal equinox has also given rise to various holidays, such as the Jewish holiday of Sukkot. At the midpoints between these four solar events, cross-quarter days are celebrated. The biggest difference between the equinox and the solstice is that a solstice is the point during Earth's orbit around the sun at which the sun is at its greatest distance from the equator, while during an equinox, it's at the closest distance from the equator. Because of this, one solstice is an extremely long day and the other is an extremely short day. Comparatively, during an equinox, the days and nights are equal lengths. That's the easiest way to describe our experience with the solstices and equinoxes. While scientifically speaking, their effects might be greater, all we really notice from Earth is the amount of daylight that we receive. And even that, since the effects are so slight, to us it might not be that noticeable. Thanks for watching this Adventurous Kids episode.